one of the things that was really uh, that was a big deal, uh, and it's understandable, is um, uh, I have some hardware in my back. I have a Harrington rod in my back. I don't know if that's like the uh, current thing now, if they still use Harrington rods or if it was a Harrington rods were being used a long time ago and they aren't uh, they aren't really being used anymore. There's other composites probably that are better that aren't so um, uh, metal, you know, and, and uh, hey, scary to interact with. And so um, anyway, I got a Harrington rod in my back. And so my doctor asked me, he said, well, you have a bone infection and in your, you know, in your left, uh, the left, I guess your left butt bone. And he wanted to see if a, if the uh, bone infection had progressed anymore, if it had eaten away any more of the bone, um, and he, so he, the way that he wanted to do that was by looking at the MRI. He said the MRI, what it does is it gives out the signal. It gives out a a, a white light or something like that if there's a bone infection uh, in the MRI results. Yes, well, he thought, well, yeah, if you had if you had an MRI in 2006, then, uh, or 2007, then you, you know, you, and you had this, you had this hardware, this metal in your back for almost 20 years, so, you know, obviously the metal doesn't interact with the MRI machine too much, because the MRI machine is a very, very, very strong magnet. And it can pull the uh, mag the metal uh, from your body very very hard. And so anyway, uh, I was nervous uh, whenever I was doing the MRI. I, I I my my insurance finally after I don't know three weeks or four weeks or I don't know it seemed like forever. Uh, they finally gave me a go on getting an MRI. Um, of course, I had to pay a copay, or we had to pay a copay of 150 bucks, which is uh, insane. But you know, like I said, that was a fine print that I didn't read whenever I was looking at different insurances um, that were available. Um, anyway, so we got that passed, and the doctor scheduled an MRI for me, and and uh, you know, I went to uh, the hospital on MRI MRI couple days ago time you know uh, I, but this time it only took about half an hour you know and uh, you know what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to drink lots of drink, drink lots of fluids and stuff like that drink lots of water so that they have a, a easier time finding your vein because uh, they took they had to do three shots of MRI while I was in the MRI tube, that little that little tube, you know, a lot of people are cross claustrophobic and so that they can't go in the tube. But I can go in the tube. I didn't have any problem about that at all. Uh, I'm not claustrophobic. And besides, my head, I'm so tall, my head kind of stuck out anyway from the MRI machine. Um, and it makes a lot of noise. But they had to run... They had to run three procedures, three RM MRI procedures on me. One like took like three minutes, the other one took two minutes, and then the last one took like three minutes. And uh, and then they then the doctor over or the the you know the nurse or whatever the guy he uh, found my vein in my right arm and my right elbow and he uh, shot me up with this um, this dye that. I think what it does is it it um, it gets absorbed by your bones or something like that. I don't know how it works exactly, but um, and usually whenever they shoot that dye in you, you have to wait a, a little while for it to be absorbed into your body, into your bones and things like that. But that wasn't the case for me. Um, so anyway, uh, he shot that dye into me. I think it was a radioisotope or something like that. So he shot that dye into me, and then whenever he did, after he did that, then they went back and they did one more MRI and uh, of me. And I think the last MRI lasted about six minutes or seven minutes or something like that. 
So all in all, together, all the whole MRI procedure took about, you know, with going in and signing up and all that stuff, it took about a half an hour. Anyway, the doctor called me up last night. You know, uh, I took the MRI a couple days ago. The doctor called me up yes last night, and he said, um, "Well, we looked at the MRI." He looked at that, uh, looked at the MRI. My doctor looked at the MRI with that person, and uh, they said, "No, the uh, the bone infection hasn't really progressed or changed or moved anywhere or made any uh, movement." Uh, from what I understood him, I. I'm um, going kind of going on memory here, but I think that that's what he told me. He said it didn't really move or change uh, or do anything different, but he said that the section um, he said that swelling has gone down significantly. Uh, you know, it was like 50% of what it was before, or maybe 40% or 30%. I'm not sure, but um, he said that it's gone down significantly, and he said that. He said, I have, I have, he, he seemed to say that he had, I had two, two areas, two little boxes or two little bubbles of swelling. One, they were able to stick the needle in and they were able to drain the fluid out, you know, pretty much all of the fluid on the 1st of, of December uh, 2011. But then yesterday, which was our, uh, Two days ago, which was uh, December 20th, 2011, then they uh, looked at the MRI um, uh, on the 21st, the next day, or yesterday, and uh, of 2011, and they found out that there's two pockets. One pocket was drained somewhat from the a needle being stuck in. And, uh, you know, they took out about 100 cc's, which is about 3 ounces, about 3.3 ounces or somewhere around there uh, of, of fluid, just serous fluid, you know, um, uh, some blood vessels, some busted blood vessels, uh, nothing really significant, wasn't really anything big. And, and the doctor said that whenever, I said the next day after they took out that fluid on the 1st of December 2011, then the next day it was the whole thing was filled up again with fluid. Well, he said that was an infection because that was not an infection because an infection would not cause uh, the uh, ball to fill up with fluid again so quickly. Um, so uh, anyway, I wasn't expecting it to be an infection. Um, and he wasn't expecting it to be an infection, but anyway, the so back to the two two uh, balloon areas. One balloon area was sim significantly smaller. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, it the swelling had decreased about 50%. And but the other area, he said that was about six centimeters by six centimeters area, and I a tenth of an inch. Uh, squared is about the size of the swelling that is going on in the second ball uh, in my bottom and he said there was three things they could do they could just they could do nothing and just leave it alone you know uh, maybe the swelling would go away slowly which is something that I'm digging I, I like that idea because you know don't do anything about it and maybe it'll go away hopefully uh, my body will reabsorb it and I can piss it out uh, eventually or another thing he said that the one thing that they can do is they can go in there in that area where the swelling is in my left buttock and they can put in a um, uh, this uh, solution that causes the area will cause the area to uh, close up, kind of shrivel up like a like a raisin. Or the third thing, what they can do is they can stick in a to a drainage tube, um, which is uh, you know a long hose. They stick it into the area, uh, and then on the other the other end of the hose. 
that's outside of your body is like a bubble or a, um, a balloon almost that, uh, you know, the serous fluid travels to and uh, collects in the bubble and every once in a while you've got to drain the bubble um, and uh, s slowly, hopefully, the fluid will go away and it will never come back again and then they can, you know, then it will go away and then they can uh, take the tube out and, uh, you know, let me go on with my life and do whatever I'm going to do. I said to the doctor, I said, I don't have to make a decision about this right now. And he said, no, you don't have to make a decision about this right now. You can think about it uh, and give us a call back whenever you decide. So, uh, you know, one thing is doing nothing, which is probably what I'm going to do for a little while. I'm just going to uh, stay off my butt uh, as much as I can because um, uh, yesterday I was sitting a lot because I was at a marriage a wedding, and I so I sat a long time, and it wasn't bad yesterday, but today, oh boy, it feels the burning pain. It's It's... It's like heavy, a dull, heavy pain, burning pain in my left buttock uh, all day. has been feeling like that all day. So uh, I feel like I'm better if I lay on my belly uh, whenever there's uh, that dull pain. And I think that it that the that I might might have been because I was moving too much around and that in that uh, sensitive area where of my left buttock where the swelling was and it so it pissed off it pissed the area off and so it um, made a lot of fluid gather up up in there again I don't know it's just it's not very happy right now I can tell because it feels very hot and it feels very uncomfortable um, but the second so he said either you can wait a month you know or whatever and see if it goes away slowly and, uh, you know, we'll just leave it alone. Or you can stick the sol solution in there and it will uh, cause the whole area of your swelling to be absorbed or sucked up like a raisin. And uh, it will virtually vanish uh, your body will somehow reabsorb that fluid and uh, you can probably piss it out or use it some other place in other places of your body hopefully in a positive form um, and there was another the third one that he said was we could go in there and we could stick a tube in into your into your left buttock and uh, drain out that swelling um you know leave that tube in there for i don't know a week or two weeks and then you know then the serous fluid would have would have nowhere to go except for into the tube and out into the balloon that's on the outside of your body just go through the tube and go into the balloon that's on the outside of the body and you would drain it and you know, just keep doing the process until uh, until no more fluid, uh, um, uh, you know, no more fluid got trapped in that uh, in that uh, butt swelling left butt swelling area anymore, uh, which is probably like one or two weeks that I would be down. So I'm not sure what I want, what what I really I should do, but I, what I'm thinking about right now is just laying off it for a little while uh try and try and stay off my butt for like a month and see if slowly it gets reabsorbed because that's what i told the doctor i said hey man this is getting slowly reabsorbed i think and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller not quickly you know maybe by five or ten percent a week or something like that so it's not going quickly but it is going away I think uh, I hope I pray but uh, I guess a month from now we'll see what happens